it went right down to the wire meanwhile and it's Atletico Madrid who are the champions as they came from behind to beat Valladolid by two goals to one. Real Madrid beat Villarreal, but in the end, two points separate the top two and Simeone's side are champions. With more on this, let's welcome in, shall we, uh, Julian Laron and Ali Moreno. Ali, we said it. Easy isn't in Atleti's dictionary, and they made their fans sweat once again, of course. They were down at the half, but in the end, it's the man of the moment, the man who has been the difference this season for them, Luis Suarez, who gets the winning goal. And of all the things that we have seen in La Liga this season, this is the one thing that we knew for certain. This is the one thing that, you know what, if you want to bet the house on it, go ahead and do that. This was not going to be easy for Atletico Madrid, simply because it's, who, it's what they do. <laughs> it's who they are. The struggle for them seems to be a place of comfort. And so we saw a team in the first half that was passive, a little nervous, a little in between. Do we go and press? Do we really come in numbers forward? Do we want to get stretched? Because, oh, by the way, when we did get stretched, we went up on a set piece and now all of a sudden we can't defend. And Valladolid is just going on the counter all by themselves and score a goal that would have put any other team in a very stressful position. As for Atletico Madrid, they were like, hey, hey this is it. <laughs> We're home, baby. This is where it feels most comfortable, where we now have to come from behind. And if there was ever a sequence of play or a sequence of moments that tell you what this league has been all about, is that very sequence in the second half where Benzema has scored potentially the game tying goal and now all the pressure will be put back on Atletico Madrid. And while the referee is literally holding his hand and on his to his ear and giving one of these things, just kind of waiting to see whether VAR, while they're checking the goal on Benzema, whether they're going to chalk it off or not, guess what? Angel Correa, simultaneously, <laughs> he's scoring on a toe poke. And just think about how all of this could have changed. Had the goal by Benzema actually counted? Had the goal by Correa not gone in? What would have happened to the last 20, 25 minutes of the game? It didn't, the league didn't change, and in the end, Atletico Madrid, through Luis Suarez, as you just mentioned, in an unlikely goal from Luis Suarez, because it was a breakaway goal, and we haven't seen Luis Suarez break away from anybody in about five years. <laughs> well, he goes on, breaks away from somebody, finishes, and is able to give Atletico Madrid the three points and, of course, the title. Well deserved for Atletico Madrid, but very much in the manner in which we expected them to win this game against Valladolid. Uh, nicely summed up, Jules. Yeah, perfect. I mean, it's. I, th I thought the fact that Real Madrid went behind, th this was the game where they could have put pressure on Atletico. If they had taken the lead against Villarreal, obviously the news would have gone into Valladolid and to the Atletico player and to Diego Simeone, and maybe then the pressure would have been higher. Instead, they went behind as well. So even when they were behind against Valladolid, the Atleti players knew that if it stayed like that, they would be champions. And they knew that also now they could start playing and now they could come back into the game. And, and I just thought, once again, it was disappointing from Real Madrid. Of course, they went on to win the game against Villarreal for nothing. But I thought the one thing they had to do it starts well. It is mm. put pressure on Atleti to try to make them doubt and, and, and make them maybe drop those points that they badly needed. And yet, Real didn't do that. And on the other hand, Atleti, with everything that Ali said, Suarez, and just quickly for me, what sums it up is, is the Korea goal because it's a bad first touch. It's a really bad first touch. And then, and then he's got the talent and the magic of doing the little tricks and then the topok finish a la Romario or a la Ronaldinho to score a... a a, a, a goal that should not have never been scored, really. And for me, that's the season of Atleti. They should not have won the title this season because they were not as good on paper as Real Madrid and Barcelona, but they took advantage of the poor seasons that both Barca and Real had. And it's something that they are doing more and more, isn't it, Ali? You think back a decade ago, when those fights between Real Madrid and Barcelona, a draw was like a defeat almost because they were just winning every single match. Simeone comes in and he's just turned this league on its head. Yes, he has. And just think about where Atletico Madrid was when Simeone first came on. And I think the one thing that Simeone has done, take away the success, take away the victories, take away all the things that now we appreciate from Atletico Madrid, there needed to be a change in the mentality of Atletico Madrid to just be another team and 
Real Madrid and Barcelona were always going to run away with titles. And they were just kind of there to give a little flavor and spice to the tournament, and that's it. And that, that's all they were going to bring in. Simeone comes in and says, you know what? How about we create our own identity? How about we create our own mentality? How about we start competing? How about we start challenging? And yes, you're good enough to do this and we're gonna do it our way. And it's not gonna be similar to what they do. And they may not be nearly as pretty or entertaining, but it's gonna be effective. And we're gonna believe in the things that we're doing. And over the last decade, what you have seen from Atletico Madrid is that at the very least, this is a team that is gonna fight. At the very least, this is a team that is gonna compete. And now they have good enough players to where it's not just about fighting, it's not just about competing, but then you're gonna score the goals when you need to score the goals. So you're gonna create chances when you need to create the chances. My only criticism of Simeone has been really that I just think that sometimes he really, he, 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 he sort of holds his team back because he goes back to his very own nature, which is defensive, which is fighting, which is challenging, which is all this intensity and all this energy. But I think this team is better than that. And we have seen that at times this year. Not all the time, but at times this year. More importantly, when Barcelona and Real Madrid had a chance to win this title, they fell off the wayside. I mean, they went backwards instead of forward. And Atletico Madrid just kept going, just kept grinding, kept grinding. It seemed like they were collapsing and they did not allow themselves to do that. Atletico Madrid, well-deserved champions of La Liga. Could any other manager have pulled this off, Jules? I don't think so. And for me, the, the big turning point of the season, which could, have, which could have really killed the season, was that first leg against Chelsea in the Champions League. Because that back six that Simeone played, which was a disaster, which he was heavily criticised for on our show, but I think everywhere around the world, this could have really unravelled the season completely, derailed everything. Because as we said, they started so well. The first half of La Liga is, is fantastic. 50 points in 19 games. This is almost never seen before, certainly for Atleti. And yet that game where he, like Ali said, where he went back but to, to another extreme to what he knows best, what he wants to do, super defensive, f almost negativity in football, just, just not having the ball, just defending. I thought that could have had such a negative impact on his own team, such a toxic impact that that could really unravel everything else. And we saw at times that after that game, they, 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 they lost a bit of grip, they lost confidence, they lost momentum completely. And then we thought at times, okay, maybe that game, really that game, have, has, has just destroyed everything that they did so well between September and February. And yet they found a way, he found a way of getting everybody again together, having that sort of mentality of like, let's, let's not give this one away because we're in such a good position. And in the end they did it. But I really thought that first against Chelsea could have destroyed everything. Let's give Suarez some love, shall we, Ali? <laughs> yes, we should. Yes, we should. And it's impossible. It really is impossible to give Suarez love and not say to Barcelona, ha <laughs> 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 Yes, Ronald Koeman, great decision, buddy. Out of way, out of way to go. Uh -huh. You need a goals, this guy's scoring game-winning goals, championship-winning goals for, other, for another team, while you guys are floundering somewhere in third place. Uh, Luis Suarez is a guy, and we have mentioned it in the past, that you know he's going to bring you quality with his final touch you know he's gonna score goals. Physically, he's right now in a place where it's difficult for him to compete in the same manner that he did in, in the prime of his career. And that's obvious, and nobody's gonna deny that. And yet, he manages to find those moments and, and those places inside the 18-yard box and the spots that he needs to be where he provides that final touch and that finish that puts Atletico Madrid over the top, that puts Atletico Madrid in a winning position. And he's done that so many times this year. We saw it early on where every time that he touched the ball inside the 18-yard box, it seemed to be going into the back of the net. Then there was a moment in which he, he, he could not score. He was having difficulties and so was Atletico Madrid. But in this last few games where you needed somebody to score that game-winning goal, guess what? You turn to your goal scorer. You turn to the guy who knows what he's doing with that final touch. And while everybody else is freaking out, Luis Suarez is scoring goals, he's kissing his, ch his children, he's giving one of these mwah, mwah, mwah. Yeah, that's right, we're the champions. In Barcelona, not so much. Jules, there's this great video which has gone viral of him sat on the pitch, FaceTiming, you assume, his family, and he's an emotional wreck, just crying his eyes out. Just imagine that less than a year ago, he was told by Ronald Koeman, we don't need you here, we don't want you here. 
imagine how, how he must have felt after giving all those years, all those goals, third top goal scorer in Barcelona history, and now you're told that you're useless, that you're not good anymore, that you're not good enough anymore. And he must have cried. I'm sure he cried when he had to leave Barcelona, he had to leave Leo Messi. And now, less than a year later, he having, he's having his revenge. This is a revenge on Koeman. This is a revenge on Barcelona. It's a revenge on Bartomeu. It's a revenge on all the people, and me included, who didn't believe he could do this athletic, but suddenly a revenge on like, oh, you thought I was not good enough anymore. Mm. Look what I did. I scored 21 goals and I took this team to the title. And I think that's the sweetest of revenge. And you can understand the tears. And today the tears were of joy. Less than a year ago, they were of sadness. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.